Hi everyone, it's Henry here. Now, some of you may know already that I'm a huge fan of the Horus Heresy. The novels, the black books, the miniatures I have been since Horus Rising came out. But before all that, Forge World produced a series of books called The Badab Wars, which was about another uh, Space Marine Civil War. This is a, a pretty uh, nostalgic um, book for me, or series of books for me. Um, it was around when I got back in the hobby. And I've always fancied doing uh, some of the armies from it and particularly the Tiger Claws here. The Tiger Claws were a successor chapter of the Astral Claws, who go on to be the uh, Red Corsairs, which is a video I did recently. One thing the Badab Wars introduced to us was this wonderful mixture of armour parts where we started to see more than Mark VI and Mark VII. We started to see Mark III, Mark V, um, some Mark IV, all sort of mixed together. And we eventually got some of those kits um, which was pretty cool, obviously, with the Heresy. So there's a lot more you can do with the Astral Claws now uh, and the whole Badab uh, series, really. So I fancied making uh, one of the characters. So the Astral Claws have a uh, second captain called Corian Sumatris, and rumours are that the Tiger Claws, so their successor chapter, they were basically disbanded and absor absorbed into the Astral Claws um, chapter. I keep wanting to say Legion because it becomes a Tyrant's Legion. And uh, one of their sort of big bosses uh, big, ended up becoming the second captain, like the champion of uh, Huron Blackheart. Or Luft Huron, as, as he was originally. Um, he's still painted in the Astral Claws colours and all the rest of it, but he's got a couple of cool pieces of war gear. He's got a, a power sword called uh, Golden Fang, and he's got this backpack mounted uh, Spectre Pattern Bolter. So he's got a few cool sort of uh, little war gear things that you can have a play around with. Um, he's just this badass, really. He's into assaults, all the rest of it. So when Games Workshop sent us through the Fafnir Ran miniature, I thought rather than paint him up as an Imperial Fist, as I think we're going to see a lot of, undoubtedly, uh, I'm a little bit burnt out on fists uh, after painting them for various people, um, I thought maybe I'll make him into an Executioner, but again, I think a lot of people are going to do that, and that's great. We get to see that, and we already have in, the, in that recent article. So I thought perhaps I'd try and use him to create uh, Corian Smartris. When I had a look at the sprue, I was pleasantly surprised that the miniature goes together sort of in the traditional Space Marine way, in the sense of um, you've got the torso, you've got the legs, which do attach ever so slightly differently. Um, but the, the, the big thing for me was that the arms attach kind of normally as it were, um, which means that converting them or kit bashing them like I'm going to do in this video isn't particularly difficult. Um, so you see I can build it up until that point there um, and it just gives me a nice base to work from. Uh, the other thing that I was really chuffed about was that the backpack, the way this miniature has been designed, like straight up, it's one of the nicest little kits I've seen from them for ages. Um, but the way it's designed is the backpack is sort of a, a self-contained unit and then the shield and the strapping and all of that that goes on it is a completely separate part that you can just leave off and you're not left with any lack of detail or weird little bumps where it should fit in and stuff like that. So for converting, this kit's absolutely brilliant. And I was really chuffed when we saw um, Pete the Wargamer, uh, a friend of ours, he, on the recent community article you saw he'd done a, a Dornian Heresy style uh, fist using this guy so it's nice to see a bit more sort of imagination using this kit and I can't wait to see what we we sort of end up seeing when everybody gets their hands on it so I rummaged around the various bits box and I came up with a few pieces that I wanted to use um, I'd got these shields from the Age of Sigmar Stormcast Prosecutors and I'd filed them down in the past to use for a White Scars project I think it was I've had this sword for absolutely years. It's the sword from the Zombie Dragon kit. Um, again, Age of Sigma. Um, just this beautiful, ornate, sort of long sword. Uh, so I thought I'll use that for Golden Fang. That'll be great. Now, when it came to the backpack, um, we, I knew I had to have this sort of mounted bolter and whatnot, and I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to mount it to the one that came with Ram. So I've got a little spare one there, and that's from the Death Watch Iron Hand character. Now, one of the things I wanted to do was to take the armour away from being, albeit very ornate, um, heresy armour, sort of Mark III. I suppose it is artificer armour, really, because the shoulder pads are a little bit different. But one of the easy ways to change that and, and tie into that bad ab look is to give it the different shoulder pads. The shield arm was a trickier one. Um, 
because of the way the the greaves and stuff are on on the plastics i needed a whole arm really so i had to ping an arm off an old um breacher kit mark three breacher kit i think will work fine heads uh, my buddy ben from the two piece podcast um fantastic hobby podcast you should definitely give him a listen I'll, I'll pop the link to that down in the description along with uh, peter wargamer's channel um he sent me through the stern guard uh, head you can see on the left. I thought it was nice and ornate, nice and Mark 7, sell that sort of 40k look as it were. And the two other heads are from the recent Primaris Gravis Captain, um, which I've painted up for a, another video that will be coming out soon, but I didn't use these two heads from him. The one on the right is super scarred up, it's awesome. I love the whole like half face one as well with the grill, but I think the grill's too obviously um, Primaris armour. So I think unfortunately we'll leave him off, use him for a future project. Now the bolter was going to cause a real uh, issue for me and I was hunting through my bits boxes. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do because a normal bolter looks pretty big on the back of him. I thought about maybe the one off the Tech Marine, the Primaris Tech Marine might work. And then I found this little guy who is a servo skull from the Titan Tech Priest from Forge World. This is a really old kit but I'm pretty sure you can still get him. And he's got that lovely little bolter attached to him. So I was like right I'm definitely going to give that a go, see how that works. Now tools for the job. I've got a nice sharp blade on my hobby knife. I've got a pair of snips. Uh, a sharp blade is really important on your knife. I usually use a new one for each sort of project. The two plastic glues I'm going to use are Tamiya Extra Thin and then just your traditional thicker plastic glue. Um, Revel in this case is the brand. Uh, but you know the type with the needle applicator. And then blue tack, which I find always really useful when I'm mocking up sort of kit bashes and conversions um, just to hold the pieces together. So I built him up to the step that I pointed out earlier in the instructions. Um, it's beautiful. It's a super easy build. It goes together really nicely. All the joins are hidden. Um, I did notice when I built it that on the arms, you've got a little bit of the connective ribbing is attached to the torso. So I was like, oh, I wonder what's gonna happen with that later, but we'll find out in a sec. And then the only bit of sort of fists ornamentation on him is this recessed uh, seventh uh, symbol, numeral on his, um, on his armor. So to fill that in, I've grabbed a bit of Vallejo plastic putty. This is just ground up uh, water-based uh, marble dust. Um, so it's very easy to use. You don't need chemicals or anything like that. Um, so I've got a crappy old brush, dip it in some water, not too wet. All right, mix it in with the putty a little bit. And then all I do is just dollop it in to the area that I want to fill. This is great for filling just those tiny little gaps that you get when, when you're building things, um, where you don't want to get the green stuff out. Um, you could absolutely use something like Milliput for this, it would work really well. Um, but all you do is fill it up, and then with a, a damp Q-tip, I just wipe it across, wipe the excess off. Do that a few times until it's flush. Now, here I find out what's going on with this weird like ribbing that's already on the arms. This model's got a ton of really cool features, like how it goes together, like not so much the, the physical kit, but how they've decided what they decided to show the armor is like um, so yeah the way the arm slots in is pretty cool you see a bit more of that ribbing the sword as you can see fits almost perfectly uh, i think all i'm going to do is trim down the cross piece slightly uh, the bottom edge of it uh, just so it doesn't look quite so sort of shoved on there but i've just blue tacked it in and i think it works great i was a tiny bit worried about the size of it but actually i think it works absolutely fine um, the shield arm yeah, lovely job. It is resin, so I'm going to have to sort of super glue it rather than plastic glue it. Um, but it works, you know, works absolutely fine. I will use a little bit of green stuff to uh, attach it and sculpt a little bit of the ribbing uh, to add it in. Um, but all we do with the shield is just cut those tabs off and that'll glue nicely just straight onto the back of the hand there. Now, as much as I was pleased that the backpack was uh, one piece, uh, in the sense of you could build it without the shield and everything on it, it's got one of my real pet peeves, which is this join straight down the middle of all the vents and all along the top. And yeah, it just aggravates me. There must be a reason for it, but yeah, always disappoints me to the point where I scavenged around old resin Mark III backpacks when I was doing my plastic heresy Mark III's just because I, I didn't want to build them with a the join. Um, but when you get them with this join, what I tend to do, it's by no means going to be the best way of doing it. This is how I sort of hobby. That's kind of what this video is. It's not meant to be necessarily hugely instructional. Just thought it might be fun to take you through my processes. Um, I'll use the thicker plastic glue, squeeze it together and let it sort of smoosh out between the gaps. Then once it's dried, I'll scrape away the excess with a knife. Now thankfully there weren't too many rivets or bits and bobs like that, so I wasn't going to be killing any detail or anything, so I didn't have to be overly careful. 
because this guy's a character and I am going to paint him up to, to game with. Um, my gaming group's quite keen to do a bit of Badab, uh, maybe his kill team. Uh, but once I've scraped that off, then I'm going to take the extra thin plastic glue and just run that down the joins and what this tends to do is it, it melts any of the residual plastic there uh, and leaves it with a nice smooth surface for you to prime over. Now for his head, um, because of the way the head of Ran attaches it's got this clever collar that you stick on and, and all the rest of it, 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 fitting a normal head in there just won't work. Uh, by normal I mean this, the old style where you have the little sort of um, nipple on the bottom of the head that plugs in. So I drilled a small hole initially and then I grabbed a drill bit that I knew that I felt was about the same size. So I've gone for a four mil drill bit here. I don't tend to use a Dremel when I'm working on the plastic models because I find it tends to often melt uh, what I'm working with. Um, and when you're only going through a very small area, you can just twist it. As long as you sh your drill bit is sharp, you can just twist it with your hands and, and you'll get the desired effect. One thing I've noticed when I've been converting Marines in the past is if, if they've got a relatively high gorget or gorget, I don't know how you say it, the collar bit, um, I found you need to set the head back ever so slightly, so not bang in the middle of the sort of cavity that you're given. Um, otherwise, the front of the grill won't sit behind that gorget. Um, but that original hole I drilled there was just a touch too far back. So I'm just going to go in, bring it forward slightly. I was a bit worried that the 4 mil was a bit too big and I was going to chew up some of the detail. Um, so I grabbed a 3 mil. As I said, it's not particularly neat. You know, or I don't even know if it's particularly efficient, but it works for me. Um, so I went with the three mil. I was like, actually, no, look, that's still tiny. So grab the four mil, and there's no harm at all in just working up, um, you know, through the sizes of drill bits to get to where we want to go to. But do let me know, like, whether you'd like to see sort of a few more conversion kit bash videos, that type of thing, from us. Um, so this is one of those personal project videos. Uh, I will be doing a full tutorial on how I paint him for the next video as well. And then again, use that very old, extra thin plastic glue just to clean up in there, get rid of any of the little burrs uh, or any of the little sort of curls of plastic that might be left in there. And then once that was dry, very important to let it dry so we don't glue the head in accidentally. I could pop his head in and it sat lovely in that little indent and I was really happy at this point. Um, I think he'll really sell the character. The Mark VII lid I think looks really cool and it, it would work in the sense of taking this model further from the original model, so sort of really setting it in 40k, which is something that's important to me when I'm using kits from, from different uh, eras particularly. Um, but I just liked the bare head so much. And I think it's, it, the helmetless head always works great on characters, I think, because, you know, it just, just looks badass, doesn't it? Now, when I came to do the backpack and add the Spectre Pattern Bolter, uh, found that there was this little indentation in the uh, front of it. And there's this little tube that goes on the back of Fafnir Rand's head on the normal kit. It just so happened to <laughs> fit really nicely with the um, servo skull. So all I've done, because it's a very delicate part, I put a small bit of paper clip in there as a pin, so I drilled both bits, glued it in, then blasted a hairdryer on it for about two seconds and just bent it up out of the way. So very, very simple. And it sits lovely over the top of him. I really, really like the scale of the bolter on the servo skull. I don't think it draws too much attention from the model, but you can see it on there. It makes sense. Oh, this guy's obviously got some kind of gun on the back of him. Um, and here he is sort of all glued together. I've had to glue the shoulder pads on. I'd normally leave them separate um, because they're going to be a different color. Um, but because of we've got these little extra pipes that come out the front, um, I checked how they attached to the original kit's shoulder pads, um, and they just sort of go into the, the, the rim, as it were. So I've just done exactly the same uh, with the two shoulder pads I've added, but because of that, I've used plastic glue, so there's a nice bond between them. There's no gaps or anything, so it looks like it's molded and uh, meant to be like that. But I'm really pleased. I think it's, uh, firstly, I think it's a nice departure from the original kit, um, but secondly, it's basically exactly how I imagined it. Um, when I was trying to come up with the idea, like I didn't really have anything that, that didn't work other than maybe the Mark VII lid not looking quite as good. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. And as I say, in the next video, uh, I'm gonna cover painting him start to finish 
uh, how I would do it for my kill team. If you fancy seeing some of my um, less successful attempts at uh, deciding on an Astral Claws scheme, um, you can check out our Patreon. I did a few videos on there on some Terminators when I was trying it out a couple of months ago. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and to make sure that you don't miss out on the follow-up video where we'll paint this guy up. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.